My name is Lenita Williams. I am circulation uh, librarian here at High Point University, Smith Library, and I will be here, would have been here for 36 years in August. In my readings, I found out that uh, President Patton, in his inauguration speech, and he started here in High Point in 1959, said that the racial problems were unresolved. And so there was not really a push to get more minority students. But in 1961, they did have their first student enrolled, which was Amy Jenkins. Much. I never looked at it in terms of, hey, I'm the first. I was so focused on, hey, I'm going to college, right? And the interesting thing about even in line, waited to get my classes, it, I would, um, they had the long line, and when we are signing up for classes, I would feel someone who would jerk on my jacket or something, and I'd look around to see who it was, and people, the students would just look ahead like, what are you looking for, you know? I get up to the desk, and I get ready to register where they're registering you for classes. And you know, lots of the normal classes that you would take um, during your first year. <laughs> they told me they were closed, the classes were closed that, you know, I couldn't get in that. So my first year in school, I ended up playing field hockey. I took geology <laughs> and they would tell me um, Russian history. And uh, I said, everything they told me, I said, I'll take it. Because when they told me the ones that I wanted to take, they would say, oh, that class is closed. I say, what is open? Geology? I don't know geology. But I, I say, I'll take it. I took it. I guess the worst thing could happen would be the spitballs. Because you'd walk on campus and students from up on second floor, they throw spitball, call you the N-word. I say, didn't bother me because I've been called the N-word all my life. You're not going to bother me by just calling me a name. So. I wasn't afraid. And then in November of 63, I think it was, when Kennedy was assassinated. Here's a bulletin from CBS News. In Dallas, Texas, three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade in downtown Dallas. The first reports say that President Kennedy has been seriously wounded by this shooting. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. At that time, there was a civil rights moving, movement that was taking place in 69. I had, you know, the assassination of Martin Luther King, Bobby Kennedy. There was a lot of turmoil in the country at the time. We were in the classroom, and the announcement had come through that um, Kennedy had been shot, okay? And some of the students, you know, it was kind of like a cheer. And the professor didn't even say anything, you know, because, you know, Kennedy was not well thought of during those times. Um, so, uh, especially in the South. So um, that is the first time I felt fear. The first time. This is a white guy who is president of the United States. And the first time I saw people, you know, almost like rejoicing in the death of any individual, but a president who is white, and I'm thinking, what, you know, what could happen to me in this situation where I am the only one and I definitely couldn't fight back and wouldn't even try to fight back because, um, you know, you are outnumbered. But it was during that time that I decided that I would have to drop out. Now, not because, just because of that. There were two reasons. That was one of them. The other reason was the money. So it was the money plus the assassination 
of Kennedy is the fear. I won't say it was the assassination, but it was the fear that I had that caused me to drop out because I thought this could get real serious because I'm the only one here. You know, there was only a few of us, a handful of us. So it was, you know, there was no black student union, anything of that nature. But we, you know, I think we were, for most of us were athletes at the time. But to go to a and to be in that type of environment, you, you didn't stand out there like you did here, where it was just a few African-Americans, a few blacks, and there was an all-black school. You know, I was scared and concerned being one of the three blacks on campus at the time. I'll be honest with you, I wasn't sure I was gonna remain here after about halfway through my first semester. My dad told me I needed to stay, <laughs> and I'm, I'm thankful that I did. He told me, I called him up concerned, frustrated, wasn't doing well academically, crying and, and complaining. He said, well, he's still, you still on a scholarship on you. He said, you didn't do anything wrong. I said, no, sir, you, you, um, they still paying for you to eat, sleep, go to school. And so he said, boy, I don't know what you want, what more you want, but, but you, you can't come home. You know, your bed's been taken, so you, you better hang in there. And, and the Vietnam War was winding down, and so back they had the draft status, so I thought it might be best for me to stay in school, in school, get an education. I went from a predominantly black school from the time I was in the first grade, middle school, until I got to high school. That's when integration started. And we, it was, it was an adjustment. You know, in the, in the transition, was trying to to be equal. I had played for coach, like I said, Hartman, since I was in the tenth grade, and I was the only black guy then. So I never knew anything else. To the point that black, white, I just knew I was a baseball player. When you when you're out there at a sport, when you're playing a sport, that puts everything equal. It puts everything on the equal equal, equal kill because if you excel, you're gonna play. If you're good, you're gonna play. You know, it's not about your skin color, it's not about anything about you, it's just about the ability. It's not black or white, it's just gray. There was only one incident I can remember. <laughs> and we were in Pembroke, and they was playing this song, I wish I was in the land of, the land of Dixie, whatever that Dixie song. And I said to Coach, I said, Coach, I said, you know, how am I supposed, and I was the only African-American there on the team. He said, how am I supposed to, to go out there where they're playing this song? He says, Otis, he says, your life, you're going to always have people come at you to try to belittle you. And he said, you always beat them with your talent. Do the best you can. Be the best you can be. He said, don't let people discourage you. Don't let anything in your life be something that you think you can or cannot do. You can do anything, just do it. I think as we become more aware of how people are, I believe we have be better relationships, but we also just need to talk and learn about each other. I believe in the work that we are doing in helping people who are normally overlooked, in recognizing those community heroes and sheroes that have never been recognized for their hard work that just kept families like mine going and who I think psh, they just need to be to be acknowledged because they are the ones that really keep the community going. <laughs>